In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear people, welcome to the Mass. We celebrate together this lovely Easter Sunday morning. Welcome. The sun is streaming through the windows. The birds are singing. The garden outside is filled with spring flowers. Among them, little dwarf tulips have pushed through. And in case I forget, the dog Chevron has been fed. So we can begin. <laughs> He'll go for a two-mile walk this evening. When the railway line is empty, I usually go out in the dark to avoid the crowds. We keep each other fit and healthy. So today, we listen to the words of comfort and hope that God gives us comfort, faith and hope in these very difficult times. Normally, this church would be filled upstairs here in the original church, downstairs by the church which was extended in 1982, a two-tier church. This is an oil city. We have people from many nationalities. They are living among us with their love, with their laughter, with their joyous natures. We thank God for their presence. And so we begin very simply with an opening prayer. We ask God to bless us this Easter Sunday morning when our Lord has indeed risen, when the tomb is empty and the tomb will release love, faith and hope charity in abundance to sustain us on our pilgrim journey. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. In the first reading we hear how Cornelius is converted. Cornelius is a soldier. He must have seen many things defending the territory of the Roman Empire. He'll have seen blood, he'll have seen gore, he'll have seen massacres, many nasty things, but he has asked God to show where is the truth, where does it lie? Does it lie in armies, in battles and in warfare? He listens to the saints and he is converted. Let's hear. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet. Three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead, and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness, that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Edgar. And our clear our religious sister will lead us through the responsorial psalm. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. This, this day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand weighs me up. I shall not die, I shall live, and we count his deeds. This, this day, day was made, made by the Lord, Lord. we rejoice and are glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This, this day, day was made, made by, by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Now, Rosario will do the second reading for us. Rosario. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. You must know how even a small amount of his is enough to live in all the dough. So get rid of all the old yeast and make yourselves into a completely new batch of bread and live in as you are meant to be. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feast by, the getting, by getting rid of all the old yeast of evil and wickedness, having only the unleavened bread in sincerity and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rosalia. I will stand to acclaim the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Let us celebrate the feast then in the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week, and still dark, when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb, and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place all by itself. And then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed and till this moment they had failed to understand the teaching of scripture that he must rise from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My hobby is watching birds, so I'm very happy just to be let loose anywhere in the countryside Give me a pair of binoculars and I will try to identify the various birds by their songs and by their colours. And around the church here, a number of robins, little robin red breast, have set up their territory. One is singing, even as we speak, from a tree in the garden. Another is singing beside the front door. Another is singing from a neighbour's garden. They number about five altogether, each evenly spaced, each proclaiming that he, only the male bird sings, each proclaiming that he has the title deeds 
to that tree or to that garden. And they will defend that space. Many a battle has been fought almost to the death by these birds over territorial disputes. There's a lovely poem by St. Thomas Aquinas in which Jesus is likened to a particular bird. Which one? The pelican. Adore te devote. Adore te devote. I adore you, O Jesus, contains these lovely lines. Pie pelicane, Jesu domine. What does that mean, the translation? Holy pelican, Jesus Lord. Holy pelican. Why pelican? Because in mythology, the pelican feeds her starving youngsters by piercing her own breast with her beak. And as she dies, the blood from her breast flows freely and is drunk by her offspring. Her lifeblood is poured out like the blood of Jesus on the cross to give nourishment. And like the pelican, Jesus gives his life to us so that others may live. The blood poured out on Calvary becomes a sacrament which we consume when we raise the chalice to our lips. And we could continue that imagery. A bird's egg becomes an Easter symbol. It's like a little tomb. It's like a sepulchre. And when it's opened, life, new life, comes pouring out. So the egg, at Easter, we'll roll it in the grass. We'll paint it in beautiful colours. And the word ovum, the egg in Latin, is a symbol of life and gives us the word ovary. Comes from the lovely Latin word. And so we give our own children the gift of life, represented in our Easter eggs, each one on Easter Sunday gets a little cream egg. But we do it with a little chuckle. We tell the children to go forward now, receive a lovely Cadbury cream egg, but don't forget to bring your ID. <laughs> so I say, bring any ID. Children, bring a driving license, make sure it's clean. Come forward with a six months dated utility bill. Come forward with a passport, with a school report. And they all come forward, laughing, they enjoy it. One little girl came up in tears last year. Father Peter, she says, I don't have my passport. Can I still get an egg? She was about five years of age. And clever little girl, to the embarrassment of her parents, she sat in a corner away from mum and dad, and she enjoyed every mouthful. Never act with children or with animals. So today, the tomb is empty, and the tomb has released its gifts. A God who loves us, a saviour who has overcome death, will continue to work in our hearts and tell us that we are significant. Tell us, assure us, that the virus will be conquered, that he gives us from the tomb, the empty tomb. Love comes pouring out, even love for our enemies. We can become the people God has always wanted us to be. If anyone is watching who feels a bit belittled, criticised by others, if you feel that you don't match up to other people's expectations, take great comfort from the words of Jesus and from the ceremony today that you are supremely important, each of you, in the eyes of God. We are new renew our baptismal promises. By which we reject Satan and all his works and all his promises which are empty. The Satan is the father of lies. He will entice us with his little corrupt gifts. Enjoy this. You deserve it. You'll feel better. You'll feel good. It's all a lie. His gifts lead to corruption and to death. Don't be deceived. And so we belong to Jesus. And so we ask 
Do you reject Satan? I, I do. do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and of earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We usually have a little sprinkling of water, blessed water, sometimes water from Lourdes, which has healing properties. But today, just a little virtual sprinkling, reminiscent of our own baptisms when we were signed with the cross, cross of Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In a bidding prayers, we pray for the repose of the souls of those people who have perished in the coronavirus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We ask God that when we have overcome the virus, we will be different people, more giving, more loving, less aware of what we possess, but more aware of what we are inside our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. And today we give gratitude that those present and those listening, we have the gift of life, we have energy, we have love. Let's not waste any single day. It's given by the Lord to serve him and to serve each other. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious hear us. Let us ask God to bless our religious sisters who do such good a life of prayer and contemplation, but also a life of activity in the world, in particular helping students at the two local universities. We ask God to bless their work. Lord, hear us. Lord, and we ask God to bless the two young students from Vietnam who intend to come to Scotland. We will pay for their education. They will be ordained to work in this lovely diocese of Aberdeen, young men, full of ideals, full of love, 26 years of age, and we ask God to bless their journey among us. They'll study for six or seven years. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And we ask Mary's intercession. She is the mother of all living things. She is our queen in heaven. Hail Mary, Amen. full Lord, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please take a seat. And now we prepare our gifts, the bread and the wine, to be consecrated to become the very body and blood of our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Into the chalice we pour a little wine, and a little water. Blood and water flowed from the side of Jesus. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And O God, wash away all my iniquities, Cleanse me 
from all of my sins. And pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. And a little gel in the hands is customary during Mass, so be assured that we take every precaution against the coronavirus. I pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon your church, O Lord, with unfailing love and favour, so that we may be renewed by the Paschal mysteries and may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for this is the time when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. And so overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim holy holy holy, holy lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord Hosanna in the highest. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit from heaven, like dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <laughs> and in the same way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis our Pope, with you our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have, together with the Pope Francis, a Bishop Hugh and all the clergy. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. We remember those who have perished in the coronavirus. We ask God to give them eternal rest. And of mercy is all we pray, but with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I will stand and pray with great confidence using the words which Jesus, our Saviour, taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power and the glory are are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. And so let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, Edgar. Peace be with you, Sister Claire. Peace be with you, Sister Rosario. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ is broken for a better world. Now we invite the members present here to come forward to receive our Lord present in the Blessed Sacrament, keeping the usual protocols about social distancing. So, Edgar. The Body of Christ. Sister Claire.
my sister Rosario. The body of Christ. It's customary that we spend a little time in silence, in precious silence, thanking God for his gifts, asking ourselves whether we live our lives in conformity with his will. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favour, so that, renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There's a special lovely Easter blessing, which perhaps we can do today. We ask God to send his Holy Spirit among us to assure us that he has gifts, gifts in abundance. Above all, the gift of faith. Strengthen us, Lord, in our belief. The gift of hope that the future will be better for us and for our young people. And the gift of love which binds together all the other gifts shown perfectly by Jesus, the P.A. Pelicani, his blood, his energy poured out so that we might live, so that we may have life in abundance. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let's go forth in peace to love God and to serve each other. Amen. Tomorrow there will be Mass here at 10 o'clock, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the exact same time, 10 o'clock. I hope you've taken something away from this little simple service, perhaps a word spoken by God that will assure you that the future for you is bright. Thank you, God. Thank you.